anthropometric measurement, upper and lower extremity girth measurements. Oh, I'm as good as Chase. Oh no, a humerus. Oh no, oh no. Oh no, I'm falling. Oh no, my ankle and my arm. According to this article, um, a brief summary explains that physical therapists assess ankle edema from either sprains, diseases, fractures, or other traumas. There are multiple ways of measuring ankle edema, and uh, with that is volumetry, water plasmography, computer tomographic scanning, and magnetic reasoning imaging, as well as circumferential measurements obtained through the use of a standard tape measure that may also be used to assess ankle girth. Okay, well, uh, I'm Chase. I'm going to be a student physical therapist. Um, we're just going to take this off and get some measurements. Uh, we're going to check to see if you have any fluid leading to swelling. A lot of times when physical therapists assess ankles, uh, it's usually from disease, fractures, uh, or other kinds of trauma. Um, so also coming in, we want to compare both sides to see if the muscle looks flatter, see if it's atrophied any, and then compare it to the other. And uh, that's how we're going to interpret our results. As far as atrophy goes, you can also have what is called edema in the joint. Edema is going to be when fluid is not effectively returned to the heart and instead collects in the extremities. And get her in a relaxed position because you do not want the muscles contracting. According to the O'Sullivan textbook, uh, while doing the exam, the therapist should look uh, and be questioning himself for several things. Does the muscles look flat? Um, is there any atrophy in the muscles? Also, is it unilateral or bilateral? Is it going to be multiple limbs involved? And is the atrophy going to be more proximal or distal? Or maybe even both? We're going to make a mark right there. That's going to be our first measurement. We typically want to do seven measurements total for three proximal and then three distal to the bony landmark area where you're starting from. So you can do it in two, four, six, depending on the injury is where you want to get your measurements at. So, and make sure you're in centimeters. So we're going to go every two from this goes up. And typically marking your areas is going to be more time efficient. And a lot easier for you. It's not permanent mar marker, right? It is not. Okay. Okay. For this demonstration, I will be performing a figure eight. A figure eight, according to this article, is a very highly reliable measurement uh, for determining ankle joint swelling. First thing I'm going to start with is my figure eight. Um, they're pretty consistent with their reliability. So we're just going to put mid malleolus, wrap around, go underneath the foot, and come back up. So 46. So she's 46 centimeters and it's always important once we do the involved leg we want to check the uninvolved to see if there's any uh, just differences in measurement and then we can tell if she has atrophy or swelling and then we could go from there. So according to this article uh, girth measurements are used to assess atrophy. This is important because we can see if there's any asymmetry between the involved and uninvolved extremities. So it's important when you're checking these areas that the, like for her ankle for instance, we had her slightly dorsiflexed but in a relaxed position. She wasn't fully plantar flexed or fully dorsiflexed. We had her at about neutral. It's important that she's not contracting, okay? So as you can imagine, after the figure eight, you go up and then you just go to your circumferential measurement. You wanna make sure you're not pinching the skin, that the tape measure lies gently over top, 20 centimeters. Okay, lift this up.
clean this up. So I'm just going to mark these down. Okay. So and then we're going to do the third one above. And then we're going to work below our bony landmark. The reason you want to be very accurate with where you're starting is if you have another therapist coming in and they're going to check, they can follow exactly what you did and they know where to start from. And then you just write down what you get. All right. And she also has uh, a little bit of inflammation in her arm. According to the O'Sullivan text, it should be noted when measurements of the upper arm are being taken, you should do distal to the acromion process of the scapula or proximal to the olecranon process of the ulna. So for her elbow, we're going to just... Relax. Okay. So for this, same thing, you want to find your bony landmark. I personally am going to do um, lateral epicondyle or the humerus. Okay. I'm going to mark that. It's like I'm getting a tattoo. <laughs> so, and then for her as well, we're going to go three proximal, three measurements proximal, and three measurements distal in two centimeter increments. And it's always easier to go ahead and mark your landmarks. So three proximal. Start at our first landmark, which was the lateral epicondyle, and lift your elbow just a little bit. So, taking your time to make sure you get an accurate measurement at each specific point, 22, 23, 24, and you just want to make sure your patient's comfortable and they're not in any pain. How's everything feeling? Good. Not pressing too hard? You're good. Awesome. Are you measuring my muscles? I am. Oh snap. I'm checking to see if there's any differences between this arm and then we're going to measure that other arm just to get like with like. Okay. So 23, 24, and you can tell I'm not, this will be pulling the skin too tight, I'm not doing that, I'm going to be very relaxed and gentle, I'm 23, so then I just write down what I have on that.